Good evening. After seven months of waiting, just last night, President Trump announced his new official social media platform. It's called Truth Social, and his team released this statement right here explaining what it is as well as how Americans can sign up. Meanwhile, a new investigation into the lobbying efforts that are being conducted by Big Pharma has found that since the year 2019, the lobbying efforts of both Pfizer as well as Moderna have seen dramatic increases, both in terms of the number of lobbyists that they've hired, as well as the overall budget that they've allocated to influence government officials. And what's interesting to note is that many of these newly hired Big Pharma lobbyists They have actually come from consulting firms that have deep ties to both the current White House administration as well as to Joe Biden himself. Let's go through it all together. This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now let's begin today's discussion by talking about President Trump's new social media platform. Now, if you remember, back in March of this year, rumors began to spread that President Trump was going to launch his own social media platform. It was at that time that Mr. Jason Miller, who was an advisor and as well as a spokesperson for President Trump, he said this during an interview with Fox News. I expect President Trump will return to social media in two or three months with his own platform that will completely redefine the game and attract tens of millions of users. And even though since that interview, Jason Miller has launched his own social media platform called Getter, For the last seven months, we've been waiting to see what President Trump will do. However, we are now beginning to see the reality of the venture that Jason Miller mentioned in that interview. That's because just last night, President Trump announced the formation of a new media and entertainment company, which will soon launch a social media platform called Truth Social. Here's part of a statement that President Trump released just last night. Quote, I created Truth Social and TMTG to stand up to the tyranny of big tech. We live in a world where the Taliban has a huge presence on Twitter, yet your favorite American president has been silenced. This is unacceptable. I am excited to send out my first truth on Truth Social very soon. So again, just to reiterate, President Trump is launching a new media group, which is then launching its own social media platform. Now, this new media group is called TMTG, or Trump Media and Technology Group, And it lists President Trump's Mar-a-Lago address as its official company address. And in terms of the leadership, President Trump has tapped a man by the name of Scott St. John to lead this media venture. And in case you've never heard of him, Mr. Scott St. John is the executive producer of several popular TV programs such as Deal or No Deal and America's Got Talent. And he has actually produced more than a thousand hours of network as well as cable TV. And the reason that this is significant is that besides the social media aspect of things, this new media company will actually have its own subscription service to it as well. I imagine it'll be similar to either Netflix or HBO Plus, although we'll have to wait and see. Now, specifically, this group lists its mission as, quote, to create a rival to the liberal media consortium and fight back against the big tech companies of Silicon Valley, which have used their unilateral power to silence opposing voices in America. Now, aside from the entertainment aspect of things, in terms of the social media aspect of it, they are planning to begin the beta launch of Truth Social in November of 2021, meaning next month, and then they will subsequently roll it out to the entire nation in the first quarter of 2022. Here's specifically what this statement says on this front, quote, Truth Social is now available for pre-order in the Apple App Store. Truth Social plans to begin its beta launch for invited guests in November of 2021. A nationwide rollout is expected in the first quarter of 2022. And what's interesting is that if you do head on over to the App Store over on Apple, you can indeed sign up for Truth Mobile right now. Then this statement also says that if you want to be part of this invite list for these early adopters, you can sign up by going over to www.truthsocial.com in order to sign up to be on that invite list. I'll throw the link to this uh, www.truthsocial.com into the description box below this video so you can easily access it. Now, what's interesting to note is that almost as soon as this new media company was announced, it was already trading on the NASDAQ market through what is known as a SPAC, or a Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Now, if you want to know more details about how these special companies work, I'll throw a link to an explanation about it into the description box below. But essentially, what a SPAC is, it's a publicly traded company that aims to merge with another company that wants to go public. And so, for instance, if President Trump's new media company wants to go public, instead of doing an IPO, which can take a lot of time, they can instead merge with one of these SPAC companies, which are already public. 
It's basically a shortcut to an IPO. And that's exactly the route that President Trump has decided to take. In fact, last night, Ms. Liz Harrington, who is one of President Trump's spokespeople, she released this official statement right here on Twitter. And in it, she announced that President Trump's new media company will be going public via a SPAC called Digital World Acquisition Group. Here's what she said in the statement in relevant part. Quote, Trump Media and Technology Group and Digital World Acquisition Group, whose NASDAQ ticker, by the way, is DWAC, have entered into a definitive merger agreement providing for a business combination that will result in Trump Media and Technology Group becoming a publicly listed company subject to regulatory and stockholder approval. Then afterwards, in the statement, she says that, and this is likely due to the fact that President Trump has such a large name recognition, in the statement, they said that this company is valued at $1.7 billion. Here's what the statement says, quote, the transaction values Trump Media and Technology Group at an initial enterprise value of $875 million with a potential additional earnout of $825 million in additional shares at the valuation they are granted for a cumulative valuation of up to $1.7 billion depending on the performance of the stock price post-business combination. Which is kind of amazing if you think about it that a newly formed company with no tangible products as of yet is valued at $1.7 billion. And as you'd expect, once this announcement was made, the stock price for this company actually rose significantly. In fact, the trading volume for this company became so voluminous after this announcement that not only did the stock price soar by 145%, but earlier today, on Thursday, trading was actually halted due to such heavy trading volume. Which is, again, kind of amazing if you think about it, given the fact that this newly created company has, thus far, no tangible products, but it does have a concrete mission statement, as well as the backing of President Trump, who is the chairman, by the way, of this new media company. And then lastly, as we already mentioned earlier, in terms of the social media network aspect of this company, the statement says that it is now available for pre-order on the Apple App Store. And if you want to sign up for that early invite list, you can do so over at www.truthsocial.com. And that it ends with a statement from President Trump himself where he says, quote, TMTG was founded with a mission to give a voice to all. I'm excited to soon begin sharing my thoughts on Truth Social and to fight back against big tech. Everyone asks me, why doesn't someone stand up to big tech? Well, we will be soon. If you'd like to read more about this new media company or about this new social media platform, I'll throw the links to all that into the description box below this video. And all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now, before we move on over and discuss how big pharma's lobbying of the US government has increased dramatically over the past year and a half, in some cases by as much as 600%, I would like to take a quick moment and introduce our sponsor for today's episode, and I will do so from the sound booth. That's right, Roman. The sponsor of today's episode is an awesome company called My Patriot Supply. So I don't know about you, but I have friends who all they have is this saved up in case of an emergency. And don't get me wrong, I love toilet paper as much as the next guy, and it's better to have it than to not. But frankly, if that's all you have saved up in case of an emergency, then you are really not prepared because Listen, with the supply chains stretched to the extreme as they are, with inflation that ra raging, and with the government even admitting that it might default on its loan obligations, I mean, a disaster looks like it might be coming. It's, in my opinion, it's a question of when, not if. And so I would highly recommend that you prepare. In my own house, I have cupboards, I have an entire closet that's filled with food, ready to go in case anything goes down. And so if you don't have food prepared, I would highly recommend that you go on over to preparewithfactsmatter.com. That's the website that they've prepared for us and buy food from My Patriot Supply. They have sold food to millions of Americans, and right now you can save $100 off of their three-month emergency food kit, which gives you a plentiful supply of breakfast, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks for a three-month period per person. Again, this is something that you absolutely need. And when you head on over to their website, you'll see they don't only sell food. They sell pretty much everything you need to survive a disaster. Air and water purifiers, survival gear, camping gear, pretty much everything you need. So as they say, don't be caught standing in a government food line when the disaster hits. Go on over to preparewithfactsmatter.com and save $100 off that three-month food kit. They're going to send it to your door quickly and discreetly. Now, Roman in the studio, back to you. And now let's move on over and discuss the intersection between Big Pharma and the U.S. government, specifically through lobbying. According to an investigation that was carried out over at the National Pulse, the lobbying efforts of both Moderna and Pfizer, they have increased substantially over the past year and a half. Specifically, since the year 2019, the lobbying efforts of both Pfizer and Moderna have seen dramatic increases both in terms of the numbers of lobbyists that they've hired as well as the overall budget that they've allocated to influencing government officials. 
And what's interesting to note is that many of the newly hired big pharma lobbyists have actually come from consulting firms that have deep ties to both the current White House administration as well as to Joe Biden himself. And to give you an example of what this actually looks like in practice, well, just earlier this month, in the month of October, Pfizer added two new outside lobbying firms, one of which is called The Group DC. And here are some of the people among their staff members who are now lobbying for Pfizer. You have Sudafi Henry, who was Joe Biden's former legislative affairs director during his time as vice president. You have Iriade Williams, who was a deputy chief of staff to former Congressman Robert Brady, who was a Democrat from Pennsylvania. And you also have Mr. Kwabena Nasea, who was not only a former staffer to Javier Becerra, who is of course now the secretary of the HHS, but he was also a top aide to Mr. Cedric Richmond, who is not only a senior advisor to Joe Biden currently, but he is also the Biden administration's director of the White House Office of Public Engagement. And so I'm sure having these types of connections will make it easier for Pfizer to lobby the US government. However, this type of lobbying does not only happen on the Democrat side of the aisle. That's because among Pfizer's growing team of lobbyists, you also have many alumni of Republican presidential administrations as well as Republican congressional offices. For instance, among the Republican lobbyists that are currently working for Pfizer, you have Mr. Justin McCarthy, who served under George W. Bush as a special assistant to the president for legislative affairs. You have Mr. Ben Howard, who served under President Trump as a deputy director of legislative affairs. And you have Mr. David Schiappa, who is a longtime Republican Senate staff member. And most recently, he was the secretary to Senator Mitch McConnell. Now, you might look at this information and say, hold on, Roman, this is true, but it's always been true. I mean, big pharma has always been lobbying big government. And I would agree that it's indeed the case. However, since the start of the pandemic, it appears that these lobbying efforts have increased dramatically. Now, as to why specifically that is, I'm not going to go into any speculations. However, when I was looking at this data, it did bring to mind that undercover video from Project Veritas, which came out about a week and a half ago, in which a Pfizer scientist said this. We're trying to keep track of everyone that's been vaccinated versus the census of how many people are actually reported. Basically, our organization is run on COVID money now. Regardless, let's take a look at the actual numbers. Here's a chart of Pfizer's recent lobbying efforts. And as you can see, in 2019, the company retained 77 lobbyists. However, in 2020, that number grew all the way to 102 lobbyists, which is about a 33% increase. Now, it appears to have declined this year in 2021, but consider that this year is not yet over. Now, Moderna, on the other hand, they had a much more significant increase in the number of lobbyists that they have on retainer. Here's a graph from Moderna. Just for your reference, by the way, the line represents the number of lobbyists, while the bars represent the dollar amount that they spent each year. And as you can see, in the year 2019, Moderna only had one lobbyist. Then in 2020, they had two lobbyists. But this year, in 2021, they ramped it up substantially and they added an additional 12 lobbyists, which is a 600% increase. Likewise, the total amount that they've spent on lobbying has increased dramatically, going from just $40,000 in 2019 to $280,000 in 2020. And then with that data only representing half of 2021, they are already at $290,000 worth of lobbying. And again, that only represents half of the year 2021. However, in my opinion at least, the percentage in the growth of lobbying isn't as important of a story as examining the sort of conveyor belt that you've seen develop in this country with individuals who work inside of the government, and then once they're done, they move over to the lobbying side of things. And if you'd actually like to go through the names and the former positions of several dozen lobbyists who are now retained by Pfizer and Moderna, I'll throw a link to an awesome National Pulse investigation where you can actually go through them one by one. You can find that link in the description box below. However, when I was actually going through that list for myself, it made me think of something else. And that is the fact that besides the lobbying that they do for the U.S. government, Pfizer sponsors a lot of news programs across this country. In fact, take a look at this short compilation video. It is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference, brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight, brought to you by Pfizer. Early start, brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett, out front. 
brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the Press data download brought to you by Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. Now, I'm of course not saying that these news programs change any of their coverage based on these sponsorships. I just thought it was interesting to point out that so many of them are directly sponsored by Pfizer. Regardless, there is something else regarding lobbying that I wanted to discuss. And that is, no matter how much money these big pharmaceutical companies are spending on lobbying the U.S. government, it actually pales in comparison to what Facebook is spending. In fact, according to this new report here that was actually produced by The Public Citizen, it reveals that Facebook was the largest corporate lobbying spender in the U.S. in the year 2020. According to the findings of this report, Facebook spent an astonishing $19,680,000 to lobby the government in the year 2020, which was nearly a full million dollars above Amazon, which held the number two position. Here's, in fact, what this report wrote as a part of their analysis. Quote, Big tech has eclipsed yesterday's big lobbying spenders, big oil and big tobacco. In 2020, Amazon and Facebook spent nearly twice as much as Exxon and Philip Morris on lobbying. Furthermore, during the previous election cycle in the year 2020, big tech companies spent a record-breaking $124 million in both lobbying as well as contributions to candidates, with the bulk of that money coming from the combination of Amazon and Facebook. Now, if you'd like to read more about this report about big tech lobbying, or if you'd like to read more about the big lobbying that is being conducted by big pharmaceuticals, I'll throw all that into the description box below this video. And again, all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment to smash that like button, which forces the YouTube algorithm to share this video out to potentially thousands of more people, letting the truth be known far and wide. Now, lastly, since you've completed this episode of Facts Matter, I would highly, highly recommend that you go on over to Epic TV and check out an awesome episode of Counterpunch with Trevor Loudon, where Trevor goes in deep and exposes the communist organizations which are working overtime to flip the state of Texas. Here's a trailer for that episode. Today, we're going to focus on Texas. If Republicans lose Texas, it's all over. This will be a one-party state America going onwards. So that's why the Democrats and the Communists and their Chinese masters are focusing very, very heavily on Texas. To save Texas, these networks must be shut down. That sends people to Communist China. That takes directions from Chinese diplomats. So that is a grounds for an investigation right there. And when you lose Texas, we all lose America. And when we lose America, we lose the free world for about a thousand years. If you want to check out that awesome episode, as well as all the other phenomenal content over on Epic TV, I'll throw a link to it. It'll be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it. I hope you check it out. I hope you subscribe. And I hope that you join us on this journey of exploring this beautiful, beautiful world through honest journalism that is based in truth and tradition. Now, lastly, if you haven't already, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already in order to get this type of honest news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed while YouTube still allows it. Also, consider hitting that notification bell so you can actually be notified of any new videos as we release them. And then lastly, until this new social media platform has come out, if you have an Instagram account, well, consider following me at Epic Times Roman. I publish behind the scenes research as well as spicy memes. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free.